So now uh, we have a, a, a second keynote speaker. It's Paul Fremantle, uh, CTO of WSO2. But Paul has been a speaker at the first API days in 2012. And he was the one of the first to speak, uh, to speak about the context, right? Uh, context in 2012, right? Where a lot of people after decided to build things based on the context of application, the context of the business, the context of the current system and software, right? And so uh, I'm really glad to have him like seven years later for the eighth edition, right? Uh, it's, uh, it will be a, a warm full moment, at least for me, to see these eight years, right? This legacy, right? <laughs> and so, so yeah, uh, and to keep the program on track, I will ask you to uh, have a warm welcome for uh, Paul Fremantle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mehdi. Okay. Hello, guys and everybody. Nice to meet you. Um, I thought that was a fantastic talk, and I, and I hope there are some links between what I'm going to talk about, which is about ecosystems and, and cities. And I think that, that a lot of what we were talking about was the, the linkage between the environment and the organisms which live in it, which is the fundamental of an ecosystem. Uh, some of you may not know me, uh, I've been working in open source for about 20 years. Uh, I spent around 10 years at IBM, and then I started up WSO2 uh, back in 2005, nearly 15 years ago. And um, my first degree was in mathematics, mathematics and philosophy. Uh, and I love mathematics. Are there any mathematicians in the room? Excellent. So, so uh, uh, maybe not all mathematicians, so every generalization is wrong. But most mathematicians love this formula because it sums up some of the main core different concepts in mathematics, the concepts of, uh, of circles, of zero, of one, of addition, uh, and of uh, logarithms and, uh, and, and imaginary numbers all in one go. And, it, and it's true as well. It's not just a, a random collection of symbols. They all fit together which is incredible, and it, it's amazing. And, and are there any physicists in the room? Oh, one physicist, two physicists. So, so I also loved physics as a kid. Uh, and the reason I loved maths and physics is because of this simplicity, this beauty. You know, here is, I, I know it took Einstein a bit of time to, to get it down to this equation. His first equations weren't quite so simple. But there we capture a fundamental fact of the universe in, in five symbols. It's incredible. Uh, and then we have biology. I hated biology. This is a biological equation. <laughs> Are there any biologists in the room? Yeah, a few. So I used to hate biology, and I dropped biology as soon as I could. Uh, and, and it's because it's so complex, and you have to remember so much stuff. You have to know so many things, and then it makes no sense. But the thing is that biology is the study of complex systems. And what Dominique has been talking about, and what we're all here for, is the fact that, that the world we live in, the software architecture world, the development world, the modern enterprise architecture world, all of these things are complex. So I think actually biology is much, much more interesting and a better way of modeling and thinking about uh, cities and, and uh, computer systems than maths and physics. I think when we go to maths and physics, we simplify too much. And we need to take on more complex models and apply them. And I think that's why the concept of an ecosystem is really important. And what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is an environment and a set of organisms. And the environment and the organisms all work together. So here's the, the, the definition, a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. And that's just what we've been hearing about, isn't it? And I think that what I'm going to talk about today is how APIs and the environment in which we put APIs become ecosystems, and how that federation of APIs across ecosystems is, is creating a richer environment and a more interesting space for us to work in. So APIs, in my view, are the products of the 21st century. And, and why do I say that? Because even physical products are matched by digital products. So when I try and take the metro, uh, hopefully the, the API will somehow tell me that the train is not running. 
because there's a, some linkage. At least I haven't tried it here in Paris yet, but I know in London it does. Um, uh, and, w and so I, instead I take a taxi, but I take an Uber, and the Uber has a digital product driven by APIs that matches the physical product to the car. And, you know, the, the products of the, of the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries were like this. This is the very first car, and it was built by the French, and, and it's a hand-built, unique, one-of-a-kind device. Right? And then in the 19th and 20th centuries, we moved to reproducible, uh, identical products, where the, you buy one Citroen DS and hopefully it's very like the other. If it's not, there's a problem. And the, the concepts that we have here are that, that products are reproducible, but a more important pro concept that comes with products is this idea of fungible. So it, English may not be your first language, and I had to look up this word as well. Uh, so fungible means that you can replace one with another. If I have one brand new Citroen DS, and uh, I have another brand new Citroen DS, I don't care which one I get, because they're both identical. And these products, therefore, need to be reliable as well. And that is what we're trying to do with APIs. But I want to take you back even further in time, before the 19th, 20th centuries, back to, to, to before Christ, to, to 5 BC. And these were the Phoenicians. And the Phoenicians developed a set of trade routes all around Europe. And they would take uh, carpets from Lepsis and swap them for olives from Sicily and, and create this trade. And this trade in products is what is very important because with, when you have a fungible product, then you can resell it, you can take it onwards. And I think this is what a, a huge change that's happening in the world of APIs, and that is what is really enabling this concept of an ecosystem. But today, to be honest, most APIs are direct from the producer to the consumer. So most people, when they use the API, they're using the API directly and they have a direct relationship with the API provider. But I think that's going to change, and, and that is, to me, the heart of, of federation and ecosystems, is the ability to intermediate, to aggregate, to create new connections, and to effectively start to build the, the trade in APIs, to build the intermediation in APIs that the Phoenicians brought to trade uh, 20 centuries ago. And so, we do have some examples today where the APIs are not just direct from the producer to the consumer. So this is an organization uh, in, in Sri Lanka where, where a lot of WSO2 people are based, uh, and they helped onboard mobile apps. And the way they did it was they created a marketplace for APIs where different developers could post their APIs and create apps and share in revenue. And in 18 months, they onboarded 2,500 developers and created 3,500 apps because they were creating a, an, a real marketplace, not just a, a, uh, not just a place where you can list the API, but a place where you can buy it, but the, sh the revenue gets shared. And another example from Southeast Asia in the telecom industry is this organization and what they do is they take APIs from lots of different providers and they aggregate them into bundles. And then they sell those bundles to cell phone operators. So they sell them to people like Orange and uh, Mobitel, Cellcom, and so forth. And they, they take those APIs and sell them. And there's a revenue share here. So the cell operator pays some money, the hub takes some money, and they pass on the rest of the revenue back to the original creator of the API, and they allocate that. So this is very much like a modern trading organization where you see people take wholesalers, take multiple products, sell them onto retailers, and the revenue gets shared. But what's really interesting is that their hub in Southeast Asia, they have, they have now said, well, we want to sell one of those bundles to a different hub run by a different company in the Middle East because they want to do the same business model. So now we have a three-way revenue share. So now the, 
The cell operator buys it, they pay the Middle East hub, who pays the Southeast Asia hub, who pays the original API provider. So we start to build up an ecosystem or a network of APIs here. And this concept of an API marketplace is where we build an API that takes APIs from multiple different providers and we build a, a shared environment. And that's really the start of an ecosystem, isn't it? An environment that is shared by multiple parties is what we heard was the definition of an ecosystem. Another organization that's doing this is, is a bank in, in America called BNY, Bank of New York Mellon. And they uh, handle assets on behalf of around 3,000 different companies, pension providers, all sorts of organizations. So they manage the assets. And about six years ago, they had 300 different ways of communicating through FTP, CSV files, all sorts of things, and they wanted to pull those together. So they built a single API portal called Nexen where you can access all those uh, different interfaces, different APIs through RESTful interfaces. And this allows a, a pension company to see what the value of their portfolio is to trade different assets. And they have around $33 trillion of assets under management, which is, uh, I think, probably the size of a small country. Perhaps not even a really small country, but like a little bit bigger country. And they have decided that they want other people to be able to deploy APIs into Nexen. So it's no longer just their own APIs, but their partners can also add APIs into it and create a shared environment. And their, their head of Nexen had this very interesting comment. He said, we want to blur the lines of technology between us and our customers. They want to merge the technology through an API ecosystem so that you create more value for everybody participating in that ecosystem. And I think that's really the, the message that there is a, a very powerful story to be had by creating marketplaces and federated APIs where it's no longer just from me to you, but we can pull together APIs from multiple parties. But I think APIs are really important internally inside an organization as well as externally. All the examples I've been talking about so far our business to business, organization to organization. But what about inside your organization? And the, the focus of the, this conference is from legacy to agile, from product to ecosystem. So let's just talk about agile for a minute. And the agile manifesto says that the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self organizing teams. So this is an example of self-organization from biology. So the, the pattern on the back of a butterfly emerges entirely through self-organization. They're all the same cell type, and they, they develop into different colors to build this pattern. Uh, and w this is what we want for our agile teams. We want teams to develop their own competencies and strengths and build their own models. I want to give an example of, of what happens, though. So Uber, back in 2016, said that they were moving to a microservices architecture. And they said that they had several hundred and counting. This is the ecosystem that Uber has built today. This is a microservice graph they published in 2019 at a conference. And there's obviously several thousand microservices there uh, and multiple APIs. And I find this slightly scary. I don't know. If I was, if I was the architect in charge of this, I, I have no knowledge of how Uber is organized, so I'm maybe being unfair here. But I would look at that, and, and it's not the dots that scare me. It's the lines. It's the lines that scare me on this picture, because if you are one of those guys in the middle, right, you have hundreds of different people calling you from all around the organization, are you still agile? Well, that depends. Do you have a versioned, managed API? Do you know who your subscribers are? Do you have a deprecation model? You know, we all know the challenges of API management. If you have a good product mindset, then I'm sure this is fine. But if you don't, then this is going to be a nightmare of product management, of API product management. 
So this is really important. And I think that self-organizing teams need boundaries. Right, I have a few teams, and uh, one of them's based in Sri Lanka, in Colombo. Uh, and you know, if they said to me tomorrow, Paul, we're self-organized, we think that Colombo hasn't got enough good coffee shops, so we're going to start up a coffee shop, right? Uh, that's not... That's not what self-organizing means, right? You need to have boundaries. You need to know what your mission is, what your place is, and then what you can self-organize and what your boundaries are. So for boundaries, I take inspiration from biology. This is a picture of cells. And what you see with cells are the boundaries. You see the cell walls, right? And the cell walls are what stops us all just being a pile of goo on the floor, right? And, and so these cell walls, these boundaries are really important to biology. This is how everything in the, in the biological world organizes. They're the fundamental structural uh, and functional unit of, of every plant and every animal and every fungus, everything. So everything is organized into cells. And cells remind me of concepts from domain-driven design that you have this concept of a bounded context. You have an aggregate with a bounded context. And we took some inspiration from that to, to write a, 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 a technology-neutral paper about how to, how to build boundaries for agile teams, how to organize based around the concept of cells. And this is in GitHub, and I, I, I would like you to read it if possible. Even more, I would love you to raise a pull request or even become a contributor to it, because I think this is a, a really important question for the whole industry. How do, we, how do we take forward, how do we build the right boundaries between self-organizing teams as we scale out the, uh, the architecture? And I think this has a lot of uh, similarity and overlap with what Dominique was talking about with the city architecture. How do, you, how do you encompass that legacy? How do you map these networks? And the way cell boundaries work is that you have this membrane and you have this thing called transmembrane signaling. So what happens is a signal, an enzyme or a protein binds to the outside of the cell and a signal goes through the cell wall and causes another protein enzyme reaction on the inside. And what does this remind me of? This reminds me of an API gateway and an event-driven architecture. Right? You have events traveling along the outside, and most of them are ignored, but certain events are, are handled and taken through the, the membrane. There's a throttling mechanism that happens, which is true also in a cell wall, and they cause an interaction to happen within the boundary. And this is my concept of a cell-based architecture, that we need boundaries with API gateways to separate units of function. And that gives those, those teams a clearly defined interface when they talk across teams, but allows them to be agile within the team. And so a, a micro gateway is, is typically a way that you would do that inside a microservices architecture, but you also might use a full API gateway and, and API management inside a larger organization. So this brings me on to five patterns I have for how we can federate across APIs. And I've talked about a lot of them already. So the first is an internal API marketplace where we pull together APIs from different parts of the organization, and, but we give them independence. So each of those groups can create and manage their own APIs and publish it in a central marketplace. There's no central uh, bureaucracy to deal with to do that. That's why it's a marketplace and not just a portal, is this idea that they act independently when they do that. And one of the biggest truck manufacturers in the world is taking exactly this model. They have 1,500 legacy apps, and they are using this model to help a de build a decentralized approach where every, everyone who has an app needs to share it with the rest of the organization can do so without, without getting mungled up in a central ESB or architecture like that. And we've also built a, 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 an open source project called Celery. And Celery implements the cell-based architecture, 
that I was talking about earlier on top of Kubernetes, and it allows you to take and build APIs in cells, to manage those cells and to publish them independently to a central API marketplace. So you might want to take a look at that project. The second is a partner marketplace where you have APIs provided by one organization, but they invite their partners to collaborate in that. And that is what uh, BNY Nexen is doing with their in environment. They are creating a federation by inviting partners and customers to join in the API marketplace. The third pattern that I see is a closed group API marketplace. This is where we have different organizations who collaborate in an environment. And so, for example, Boeing has done this to work with all the people who help manage the plane, who lease planes, who, who run planes, who, who service planes. We also have seen governments do this a lot. So, for example, Dubai government has an initiative called Smart Dubai Government. And this works very well when you have different government departments that need to collaborate, but they're really separate entities. So they want to act as one organization, but in fact, they are very separate organizations. And a single marketplace can help bring them together in a much more structured way. The next example is a shared revenue marketplace, where we have an API marketplace where really different independent people come together. And those people can, uh, can all participate and gain value from participating in this APR marketplace. And that is the one that I talked about before with IdeaBiz in Sri Lanka, what they created. And I've seen other examples of this as well. And then finally, we have this concept. Oh, it should be number five. I'm sorry. I've, I obviously have an eventually consistent numbering scheme, um, which means I'll probably get around to changing it before I give the presentation next time. I'm sorry about that. Number five is the idea of an aggregator API marketplace. So this is where we pull together APIs, but we aggregate them, bundle them, and resell them as a whole or something different. And I've seen this happen a lot in the telco industry. And uh, one example of this is an organization called Appigate who, who do this. They basically take together lots of APIs, bundle them, and sell them on as a bundle to other parties and share in the revenue. And of course, we can have layers of aggregation, as I described earlier. So I think, I hope these are all inspiring you to think about ecosystems in different ways and to think about how your APIs can fit into not just a, a direct producer-consumer environment, but how they can branch out into a more federated model of how to do this. Another kind of ecosystem that's very important to me and I've spent the last 15 years doing is open source. I think open source is a massive e ecosystem, and all of those examples I've given you were built with an open source API management platform. So that's the only plug I'm going to do for WSO2 today. So I'll shut up now and move on. Um, we are working with a few other parties and trying to say, well, what does it mean to open up these concepts of federation? So what would it mean, for example, to have an open specification for how you publish a API into a portal, not just the swagger, but also the billing model, the revenue model, the subscription approaches, the product, and so forth. And so that's one aspect of it. Another aspect is that when you do these shared revenue environments, you need to have an open model for sending billing events back from one, port, from one gateway to a shared billing environment or, or to different parties. You also want to be able to work with a portal with multiple gateways. So uh, we have started a group that is trying to define some, some industry neutral specifications on this. And if you'd like to help out or you think that's interesting, come and talk to me afterwards or send me an email and I'll put you in touch with the group. It's still in the formation stage, so there is an email list and a GitHub page, but they're still just getting started, so I'd rather you came and talk to me first. Uh, and, and, but I think that's really important. And we've also been doing research with how we could use a blockchain to back this, so it's truly an independent API marketplace and federated environment, and there's no central owner of it. 
which I think is very interesting. So that's also something you might be interested in talking to us about. And I just want to leave you on this concept here, which is that studies show that ecosystems that have high biodiversity are more productive. And that's really the point of what I've been talking about today, that the more you can build an ecosystem of APIs, the more productive an environment you can build. And I, and I hope that is something you think about throughout the full two days of this conference, how you can build a more productive ecosystem that will be therefore more, give more life to more opportunities, to more innovation, to more creation, and in, enable new business models and new exciting things that weren't possible with just a plain uh, producer to consumer API. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have time for uh, one or two questions. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Thank you, Mehdi. Thank you very much for, uh, for this talk. I love the biology metaphor, right? Uh, we had this discussion. And I, I didn't know I had uh, billions of microservice gateways, like, you know, uh, in my <laughs> cells, right? Uh, I, I will see life in it. Hundreds of billions. Hundreds of billions, actually. No, yeah, or, yeah. You know, so, so do you have any questions, you know, for two, uh, before the break and the coffee? Right, federated ecosystems. Are people scratching? Yeah, we have one question here. And, and, and actually, there is a metaphor I love. It's about governance, right? Because you talk about your federated API ecosystems, but how do you organize to publish APIs, right? You know, as a in a group in a company, right? And someone one time used the metaphor of DNA, oh. okay. said that DNA is like really strong rules, but enabling anything to happen. You know, you have ATCG, you the four base. And then, then life can happen, right? You do what you want, uh, at, only if you respect these rules, right? So, you yes. know, so, so yeah, so Absolutely. I love it, this one. Yeah. Hi, um, Guy Sege from Autodesk. Um, you talked about inner APIs and about uh, not having uh, any um, inner bureaucracy. And I wonder how you can manage it that every API uh, can talk to another API and it won't be a mess without having the bureaucracy? So, uh, obviously, it's, it's a big challenge. Uh, and uh, the, the way I've seen companies be successful and organizations be successful with this is, is firstly, that you need to have a, a well-defined versioning publication portal. So you need to say everybody's going to publish contracts, they're going to have policies on deprecation, they're going to communicate their, their standards. But the, the second thing that I think works well is to create the right enablement kit. So in other words, you want, you want people to have some standards, but you want that to be devolved. So, so for example, Adidas uh, is, publishes their API playbook out on GitHub. So anyone can see it, but e even more importantly, all the internal teams in, in Adidas are going to have no problem finding it. It's, it's out on GitHub and it says, here are, you know, we expect you to have a swagger, we expect you to use JSON schema, we expect you to use these, the JWT tokens or whatever it may be in a standard way. And I think that that's a very good model to, to use. And, and personally, I think it's a good model to even take that outside. It's, it's, it's amazing how in a large organization it's often easier to communicate via outside means than inside means. I used to work for IBM and I found that it was much more productive to publish some open source and then all the other IBMers would come talk to me than when I published it inside IBM. So, so that's a, a way I think that works very well. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. Oh, you have one other question here. I'll go with this mic because I'm closer, right? Just a, a question, uh, how do you deal uh, in your five principles with uh, data privacy and GDPR? So it's a really good question. Um, how do you deal with data privacy? So the, I think the way you have to deal with it is that those, uh, those federated parties have to take on the ownership of the privacy. So for example, 
One of the things we've been doing some research on is using decentralized identifiers, using a blockchain and, and this concept of sovereign identity. And so I come along with my decentralized identifier and I prove to the API gateway who I am. And then it creates a new pseudonymous identifier to, to, that, that is not correlated directly to me to then pass on that request. And so through the decentralized model, we can do some billing and we can charge this and we can understand who, how things were used, but without necessarily understanding exactly the name of the person who did it at every time. And then when, we, when they have the right to be forgotten, then we can delete that, I, that, that mapping from the decentralized identifier to the pseudonymous identifier, and then there's no way of tracking them anymore. So, so there are techniques, that, but they are complex. But, but I think this, the heart of it is you unfortunately need your federated identity to go with your federated API system. That's a whole nother keynote. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah so right. internal, external, marketplace, hybrid, like you have many patterns, and we will see them in the next two days, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, th uh, I think it's time for uh, the break. I will ask you to make a, a warm, warm applause for Paul Fremantle. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very, Thank very much. much. Yeah, great. Right. Thanks. To keep it short, it's time for the break, uh, uh, and we will be back at 11:15, right? For in the different rooms for uh, the program. You can check the program in the print on the printed program or online, and see you uh, in a bit. Thank you very much.